I'm here to share with my good friend, executive and artistic director Clive Gillinson, who's also wonderful. <laughs> and I talk about all the time is music has this wonderful power to bridge time and culture and bring people together. And frankly, there's no other place that really embodies this more than Carnegie Hall. There was a soprano by the name of Sisetra Jones who actually broke that color barrier back in 1893 at this hall. Pete Seeger sang, we shall overcome at this hall. Isaac Stern performed over 200 times at this hall before he rallied the community to save it from destruction. It's a place where Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, Billy Holiday, Leonard Bernstein, Jesse Norman, Dizzy Gillespie, and Itzhak Perlman, and the great Count Basie awed and inspired audiences from around the world. When you step inside Carnegie Hall, you feel the promise. You feel and you start to understand what America is all about. It's inclusiveness. It's a place that is vivid and enduring. And it's the promise I want to speak about tonight. And I will stay on time. I know two minutes, so start the timer now. It's a promise of a place that will bring us together. <laughs> In fact, it was at Carnegie Hall that Dr. W.B. Du Bois joined Rabbi Stephen Weiss in 1945 to conduct a meeting for the defense of Israel at the end of World War II. We can clap for that. We have a history of African Americans and the sons and daughters of Israel coming together and supporting each other in the liberation of our collective spirits. Our communities, our culture, our country, there's a certain poetry that brings us together, and it's about common values. Just two days ago, leaders from across our country gathered in Selma, Alabama to mark the 55th anniversary of the Bloody Sunday March. My generation grew up with the images of these peaceful protesters crossing this Pettus Bridge and those images are seared in our memories. The Jewish community's leadership was part of the civil rights music uh, movement and is one of history's most neglected truths. <laughs> Men and women, black and white, reverends and rabbis, more than half the lawyers who volunteered their services to the movement were Jewish. They are part of the tribe. Rabbi, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel linked arms with Dr. King on this bridge and he said, I felt like my legs were praying. And much is made of the divisions and anger in our society today, but many of us are rightly concerned about the divide between the African American and Jewish communities. I'm here to say to anyone who propagates this fear and division, they simply don't understand our common experiences and our common bond. The Jewish people and the African American people share a birthright burden. We have been wanderers in search of a place to call home, a place to plant roots, and a place to build a community. But these places do exist. We have to forge them to exist. The neighborhood in East Denver where I grew up wasn't affluent, but it was locked out of the community of America. But we looked out for one another. We weren't middle class, but we were striving class. When my father earned his doctorate, the entire community came out and came to our house and congratulated him because his achievement belonged to the entire community. I was bused across town to an elementary school where I learned to play alongside some kids who didn't look like me, didn't worship like me. But I'll tell you, many of my classmates were Jewish. We sang songs for Hanukkah together. We attended Passover, and we played in the jazz band together. And I'm not suggesting that the complexities of our world have solutions as simple. What I am suggesting is that we can begin to heal our world when we acknowledge the similarities and burdens we carry. 
and we work together to liberate them. You can't have lived the life that I have without understanding this work begins in our schools. I was the first generation in my family to actually have all its rights in this country. The first generation in my family to live and get to go to a desegregated school. And this was a time when America was trying to rediscover itself and its soul and its values. I saw those values when my mother wrote that $25 check every month for over 50 years. And when she started writing it, there was no automatic bill pay. She would write a check, address the envelope, stamp it, and we'd go to the mailbox and mail it together. That had meaning. Meaning. I saw my fa father engage for decades ensuring that the young people in my community had food, had the ability to go to Head Start, to ensure that they understood the importance of voting and leading voter, voter registration programs, and made sure they had access to the outdoors. They were teaching the importance of participating in the bounty that is America. And it is this that I had in mind when I stood on the stage at the commencement address at Morehouse College. I was overcome with a bittersweet feeling as the first generation of my family to have these rights in this country looking over a sea of 400 young men. They were celebrating the greatest accomplishment of their lives. They were on the verge of soaring, and they had families that had prepared them and were lifting a burden to ensure that they could soar. But they were weighed down by debt. And it was not lost on me that there were 400 families and it was 400 years after 1619 when their ancestors were brought to this country in bondage. And I imagine feeling the lightness that I could actually change their lives, liberate their spirits, give them the opportunity to either start a business, take a job at a lower salary, to teach in their neighborhoods, Maybe to bring a better social purpose to their lives than they otherwise could. And maybe, and just maybe, get access to the American bounty 20 years, 30 years before they otherwise would. If there's any question about the commonality of the values between the African American and the Jewish people, we need to look no further than Dr. King's famous sermon, sermon at Ebenezer Baptist Church which reflected on the Jewish tradition of Tikkun Olam, to repair the world. I want to be on your right side or on your left side, Dr. King said, in love and in justice and truth and in commitment to others so that we can make this old world a new world. Let's honor the tradition of linking arms and walking together. Let's honor the spirit of the Talmud that vigorously de that vigorous debate makes us stronger. And even in disagreement, we are brothers and sisters. Let, let's never allow the ties that bind us fray. Let's work together every day and make our old world new. Thank you again for welcoming <laughs>